Okay, welcome back everyone. I'm going to try to record a quick video while I'm uploading my progress for fungi. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to do a quick video. Um, I want to do tutorials again, so I'm going to I'll just try to do something small and simple. Um, something I kind of found out like a month or so ago. Uh, today's video is about adding noise to rotation. And um, if you're in, if you're in, if you use Unity and stuff, it's probably like a no-brainer. How do you do it? Uh, but lately, you know, I've, I've been spending two years or uh, two my years building this game engine purely focused on Quintorians. So everything around you kind of just kind of forget or just not pay attention to. So you you spend so you're so focused on on Quintorians that you're like, man, how do how do you, how do you, how do you add noise to Quintorians? It's like how do you do that? You know, it's like how do you because Quartonians itself is a kind of a hard thing to understand. So here's an example of rotation, but at, at the noise level. You know, it, you know, no, this is what noise looks like when you apply it to rotation. It's just kind of just like, you know, it depends on how you, you, what numbers you use. But this is kind of like a fun little thing, like a twitchy little robot. Or, you know, you can, you can have something just glitching up and acting up and, you know, whatever. Um or you know, like you would, you you would wonder, like what, how, 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 how would you do this? So, like I said, if you if you if you're a Unity person and you don't deal with Contorians on a day to day basis, it's a no brainer. <laughs> but it, it's it's one of those things like if you're in if you deal with things at such a high complicated level, the simple solutions elude you. And the simple solution is you don't use Quintorians. <laughs> you just don't. What you do is use use Euler. Euler, it, like especially in Unity, everything in Unity is Euler based. So it's basically the rotation of X, Y, Z uh, axis. So the simple solution is, like I said, just here's the X rotation in Perlin noise. Here's Y. Here's Z. And then say, well, and for our case, Quatorians say, well, create a Quatorian based on these Euler values. So I save it into my local rotation, and I'm using the new Fungi engine. Uh, if you haven't seen the progress video, um, Fungi has been being rebuilt, and this is the new. This is the first video using the brand new Fungi engine. Um, everything in the past two years is still applied. It's just new approaches and 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 slimming down the, the engine. So. If you see how the code looks a little different and weird since the last video, that's because it's the new Fungi engine that I spent the last month rebuilding. Uh, source code is available, and you guys can go have at it. So back to here, it's very simple, very super simple, very super simple. You know, just do that, and then you're done. <laughs> uh, you, I have an example of using 1D Perlin noise, um, but I don't have uh, the the 1D library. Uh, uh, set up for this lesson because I found that this noise function that I found, even though it does work as Perlin noise, it's not as good as the noise library of like 2D Perlin noise. Um, it's, it's just, it's not like I, I, I place with the numbers and it's not as smooth. Um, because that other that noise, that other Perlin noise, I don't know if it's real Perlin noise to be honest, because um, the code is very very simple and it, and it generates a random uh, it generates like a random default set of numbers every time you initialize it. So like it, it wasn't like it, would, it was more wild than this. I like how this one's more smooth and it's not as crazy. Um, so I'm using so. Your noise functions will vary, and there's so many different things uh, in a noise field other than Perlin noise. But that's really essentially all you have to do. If you if you're dealing with a system that's mostly Quintorians, like fungi is, um, there are simple functions to convert Euler to Quintorians. So uh, let's see if I go to math Quintorians. Uh, granted, this function. I don't remember, uh, probably commented where I got it from, from Euler. Find. Well, I can't find it. Where are you? I spelled it wrong. That's why. Uh, it comes from 3JS. Because uh, sometimes I go to like GL matrix to find things, but I don't think 3JS has that 
Like I, I, I always go there first to grab functions, but it looks like it, it just there wasn't a good one or it just didn't work well. But 3GS Quintorian object actually had a really good um, from Euler, and I think two Euler. No, the two Euler, I get from somewhere else. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like I guess the two Euler did, like. Because I remember I experimented with it with this with two Euler and from Euler, so I would I would set it and and, and try to get back and th these two functions together. Like if I set it one way and I then I uh, and I go to the Quintorian and say give me back the values, I get back the exact same values. So the from 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 uh, from three JS works, but two comes from this other library. So, uh, so this is to con this one converts Quintorians to e Euler. Um, like I said, I can't explain the math because I don't know Quintorians math. It's very complicated. It's, even though I work with so much with it late, uh, in the past two years, I don't I don't understand the fourth the fourth dimension aspect of it. But I know how to use Quintorians, uh, and I'm getting better at it every every month, every day. The more I use it, the better. I, I, I just the using using it becomes easier. Um, and this is a from function. And this is this is how you turn convert Euler to Quintorians. And there's like different ways to go about it. Maybe that's probably why I have problems. Like I I set I set the default to y x z because that's how rotation works the best. And uh, I think the two Euler. This two Euler uses. X, Z, X. I think that's the order it uses. Or does it? I don't know. That makes sense because there's two different orders. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I actually don't know. But these two should work uh, perfectly together. Um, so that's it. That's really just noise. Um, but, you know, that that might not be so 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 impressive, but you can also do bones. And here and here is an armature of bone chain. Oops. And um still getting used to the new camera controller that I built. And uh yeah, there you go. It's 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 noise, it's it's random. And you can apply it to bones. And you know it can kind of create this wavy thing, and and then this one is only two axes. Axes. I'm only rotating on the z-axis and the the x-axis. So it's just two axes, and I'm rotating, and I'm rotating them based um in uh different ways. Uh, so if we go to the other file, which is bone noise, um, code is very simple. The only difference is that I have this extra stuff. Uh, so. You know, I have a function called armature chain. This creates a chain of armature uh, bones. Very simple. <clears throat> then I have something called chain noise, which all it does is creates noise. Um, f down the chain. So for for every one, there's like an offset. So this way, so um, and you, the offset is different. So the first bone. Is at zero. At one, it becomes negative three. So every bone after the first bone is kind of like the history of the Perlin noise. It's what what's previously done on Perlin noise. So so that's forward, that's back, that's back, or more back, or whatever. Um, and depending on the order, it becomes very different. So I can say make it positive, refresh. And now the way it moves is slightly differently, just by going in different directions. Um, and if we want, let's add like eight bones to the chain. Refresh. And now, you, now it kind of it's more like of a snaky type of movement. And now it's kind of like the end of the chain kind of dictates where the movement is. Uh, but if I were to make this back into a negative instead of a positive, it's really the you know basically it's the base of um it's the it's the base that actually dictates all the motion. See, as you can see, as it reaches the end of certain of us of some Perlin noise, everything kind of just lines up. <clears throat> 
And the, the most interesting thing is that if you think about it, you can do this. Let's do this. Just do one axis. I might have to create better offset. Uh, let's try maybe an offset of one. Refresh. There you go. Let's do an offset maybe of two. Refresh. Uh, almost. I think one or maybe zero point five. Uh, I want this. I want to slow it down too. Uh, refresh. There we go. I can make it a little bit faster. So, like, if you, so you can, like I said, you can you can play with this Perlin noise thing. Um, like here, I'm trying to see if I can make like kind of this like random waggy, like, like something that just wags randomly. Um, <laughs> like how it just kind of just stops. Uh, I guess it hits like this plateau of like constant zero. Um, but yeah, you can just do one axis, and and it, you you can kind of create this kind of like a nice slice nice effect. You know, you I can do. Let me try the x again times 0 0.1. So it's very, very, very minute when it comes to x. <coughs> Oops, I forgot. New camera controller. Hard to tell it like kind of wagging. It's wagging a little bit back and forth on on the z axis on on our, with some noise. But there you go. You this is how this is the, this is what you, this is why I kind of wanted to show you because you can instead of just using random which is more it's it, it, um, static and crazy, you can use noise. You can use uh, find some really good noise function and apply it to bones, and then you can do some kind of like random wagging f thing, or you can make things like move around a circle um, in, in, a, in a Perlin noise kind of way, so it's not kind of routine. It's kind of random. It's like, but it's smooth randomness because that's what the whole point of, of like Perlin noise is. It's, the, it's, it's random, but it's smooth. It's a smooth transition from one point to the next. And you can sh control the frequency and everything else. Um, you can make it more chaotic and whatnot. Like if I want the, the offset to be really chaotic, you know, I can make the offset a lot bigger and it's now it's 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 less smooth you know you 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 can you like you can control it so play around with it um you, maybe i would love to see some other ideas of what you can do with perlin noise being applied to rotation because it'd be really kind of cool like what what other animations can you do you know like it's instead of something being glitchy or doing like a wagging tail or a tentacle kind of like, like i said this can be like like you have an octopus and tentacles are just moving in this smooth but random way um just by defining the criteria of, of, of the amount of rotation you want to go like the minimum and maximum amount of rotation and that's what i'm essentially just doing the 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 minimum the minimum maximum rotation is half pi, which is 90 degrees. Uh, but Perlin noise, the function gives me a value between negative and one and one. So the, my range is negative 90 to positive 90 degrees of rotation. And don't forget, you you the offset for each bone is different. You know, so you so you can be different degrees. You can you can change, you can you can change the the the. The range to per bone, so this way, f further down the bone, there's less um, less movement that it can do. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do. Uh, like I said, like an octopus, a tail, you can you, you can do whatever you want with it. And this video is 15 minutes long, and I think it's good enough. Uh, I like I said, I just wanted something small and simple to make. Um, but like I saw, it, it, it's it's a fun kind of concept to add noise to um, rotation. I haven't really seen anything about that before. Um, <clears throat> uh, I did this. I, I kind of learned this when I was um, doing uh, my IK dance uh, thing. <clears throat> That's when I first was ex was exposed to noise applied to rotation. I was like, oh wow, it didn't occur to me. <laughs> I just use Euler to um, to actually do the noise onto uh, rotation, and it works pretty well. Uh, so yeah, that's it. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Um, 
I'm going to try to do some more videos. The next one probably I'm going to start doing maybe a two or three part video about uh, spring uh, physics, uh, how to do spring physics. Uh, do it maybe with some motion and rotation. And um, at some point, do do spring onto bone. So this way you can um, do some fun stuff with uh, springs and bones. And, you know, one thing that you can do with spring and bones is um, boob physics. So <laughs> and maybe at some point I'll have a 3D model of a character. And at the very end, I'll see if I could do something like that. Very simple. Like it's a very simple example. I don't know. Why not? But <laughs> maybe not. I don't know. Maybe I'll get flagged if I do something like that. But yeah, well, definitely the next video I want to do, is, next things I want to do is deal with spring physics. Like do something simple, maybe something in the middle, and then something maybe a little bit more complicated. Uh, spring physics are fun. So uh, I got to, I got, I played with it like a month or two ago, and I prototyped different things. Uh, but <clears throat> now I need to get the, I need to uh, organize the code and see if I can get to build a nice simple library to use with fungi, maybe three JS. Everything now has to be electrolyte. I like to build my new libraries to work on both if I can, because I can use it at work and I can use it for fun. <laughs> so, and uh, yeah, that's it. Um, there you go. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll uh, see you guys in the next video. I wasted too much time. And um, yeah, bye-bye.